Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Pokemon Sword and Shield and how compatible it is on Yuzu and Ryujinx emulators. First of all, we're going to be taking a look at Yuzu, discussing how it runs and how compatible it is. The gameplay footage you are currently watching is of Pokemon Sword running on Yuzu's latest mainline release at time of making this video, Yuzu 60, and as is very apparent, it is rendered super, super well, and while it's currently not perfectly rendered with a few missing graphics here and there, it's pretty damn close. Currently, it has a few lighting bugs in the wild area and many of the open world areas. It has a few shadow bugs, and as far as I'm aware, it doesn't currently render properly on AMD GPUs, though this should be remedied on the upcoming Vulkan API release, which the developers of use you are currently working on. Performance wise, on my system containing an 8700K which is currently clocked at 4.7 GHz paired with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, the game runs at anywhere between around 22 to 30 frames per second, that is of course when limiting my frame rate to 100% speed. Judging by user reports on performance on Yuzu's Discord, if you're having fairly good performance in Pokemon Let's Go, you can also expect to have very very respectable performance in Pokemon Sword and Shield also. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the issues currently happening in Yuzu that hinder this game from being playable. At the moment, at least, there is a soft lock that will basically happen every time a major cutscene happens in gameplay. This soft lock prevents the game from being playable as you can't progress past that point. The only way I was able to capture the footage you're seeing in this video in order to show you how the game is rendering and running was by dumping a save from my Nintendo Switch. If any of you guys want access to this save I used, you'll find it pinned in the Switch emulation room over on my Discord server. Currently, the developers of Yuzu are working around the clock to try to figure out one, why this softlop happens in the first place, and two, fix it so that this game can be considered playable just like Pokemon Let's Go is. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at Yuzu, let's jump over to Ryujinx and take a look at how Pokemon Sword and Shield are both running and how the games are from a usability and a playability standpoint. Okay, so here we are in Pokemon Sword and now we're running on Ryujinx and as you can see, very similarly to Yuzu, it is rendered very, very well. While at least currently it doesn't have the same shadow issues that are present on Yuzu, it does have a lot of rendering issues all to its own. For example, there is no rendered water, the skyboxes both at daytime and nighttime are missing and poorly rendered, any situations where there's fog in gameplay, the graphics become very distorted and broken, and for the most part, the effects that come off any of the Pokemon's moves in the game are currently not rendered. Performance wise, at least in battles, it runs at anywhere between around 25 to 30 frames per second, and in the open world or overworld areas, it runs anywhere from about 4 to maybe 10 frames per second. Do remember that this is running on an 8700K clocked at 4.7 GHz, so if your CPU or computer is much lower spec than that, you can expect much lower performance. Playability wise though, this is where Ryujinx comes into its own. For example, even at these lower performance levels, the sound is always going to be at 100% speed. Here's a quick example of what I mean. Even though the game is only running at between around 6 to 10 frames per second, you can clearly hear that the audio is playing back at 100% speed, making the game far, far more enjoyable when running at these lower performance levels. On top of all of this, the game doesn't softlock like it does on Yuzu currently, meaning that it technically could be playable from start to finish. I'm not going to say it is playable from start to finish because I myself have not finished it yet. I haven't seen anyone else report that they have played it start to finish and also the fact that you currently need a game save to even get into gameplay. If you require more information on getting Ryujinx emulator set up, as always, you will find information pinned in the Switch emulation channel over on my Discord server. While I would love to include all the info required to get these emulators up and running in the description, doing so is only going to get this video blocked worldwide and a possible copyright strike on my channel. Two things that I certainly do not want. 
As always guys, when anything changes on either of these emulators in relation to either game compatibility, performance or absolutely anything that makes them more playable, I will be sure to let you all know as soon as I possibly can. On top of this, I'm also going to be doing two brand new revised guides for both Yuzu and Ryujinx, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled on the channel for the release of those new videos. If you enjoyed this one, remember to hit the like button down below. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe to my channel. And if you're already subscribed, make sure to hit that bell icon beside the subscribe button so that you get notified as soon as I make a new upload. I'm going to leave you guys with some extended raw gameplay footage, first of all of Ryujinx and secondly of Yuzu, so that you can gauge for yourself how these games are running, performing and also how they are from a usability and playability standpoint. If you want to skip forward to the Yuzu emulator gameplay, you'll find a timestamp down in the description that brings you right there. Once again guys, thank you very much for watching, have a great day and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.